I'm doing it. I'm building a totally awesome, ultra precision 6G TPRS rifle with a BAT TR action and an MDT ACC chassis. This is gonna be a series, and in this video, we're gonna kick it off. Gavin Gear here from ultimatereloader.com. It is time. My 6GT build starts right now. In this video, we're gonna cover getting the MDT ACC short action chassis system out of the box. This one is in FDE. We're going to, I have a whole agenda here. We're going to talk about project goals. Why am I doing this build and what do we hope to accomplish? We're going to talk about the 6GT specifically comparing it to the 6-Dasher. I have a 6-Dasher right here. The 6GT has some different advantages and different disadvantages. We're going to cover all of that. We're going to go over all of the build components and the plan for the build. We're going to talk about the tools, the lathe, the reamer, all the other tools that are a core part of this build. And finally, I'm gonna talk about what do I hope to load? I've got some Alpha Munitions 6GT brand new brass here. I've had really, really good luck with this with my 6-Dasher build. In fact, some of the loads shot the tightest group I've ever shot, and they weren't even reloads. It was just factory new Alpha brass and Burger 105s. So I'm gonna be asking you all, what do you think I should load? So let's waste no further time and get this ACC out of the box. Well, here it is. Everything is out of the boxes. We've got the MDT ACC short action chassis for Remington 700 in FDE. We've got the SRS X Elite buttstock also in FDE. And we've got the Vertical Grip Elite. So I'm gonna take a moment and put this together. If you wanna see detailed instructions, you're gonna to wanna to check out the video that I put together for the long action ACC 300 PRC build that I did. I'm gonna to get to work here. So here it is. I only had to do two things. Install the buttstock by the means of a single Allen bolt, and then the installation of the Vertical Grip Elite, which I can already tell I like a lot better. I have larger hands, and with the increased palm swell on this and the rubberized texture, it is a rubber grip on the outside, uh, that's going to be really, really good. And Overall, a lot like the long action ACC that I have. We've got the integrated ARCA rail. This is really aimed at your PRS or NRL competitor. We've got a wide variety of options, integrated barricade stop. We've got uh, the mag catch release button right here. That's AMBI. There's really a lot of great features here. Uh, everything I'm looking for and, and really nothing I'm, I'm not looking for. Uh, so we'll go a little bit more in depth in terms of the adjustments and getting the ergonomics dialed in when we get into getting the rifle set up a little bit later in the series. But one of the things right off that I really like here is the ability to take the, the butt pad and rise it a little bit. When I'm down low shooting prone, this gets my shoulder into the right spot and uh, I just love having that capability. We've got action screws for our, our Remington 700 action, the BAT TR in this case ready to go. Uh, and then I can also interchange the weights that I've got on the ACC long action if I need to do that as well. So this chassis is also really aimed at balance and weight distribution rather than is sheer mass. This rifle here is loaded up with a full weight kit and weighs 26 pounds. I did that on purpose because I wanted a 300 PRC that was <laughs> gonna be pleasant to shoot all day. So let's talk project goals. So. I had the goal of using uh, the existing TR action that we did with the six dasher build. I've got a variety of barrels now that I've chambered for the bat TR action. 223 trainer, we've got the six dasher and a 6.5 Creedmoor build that we did here recently on the channel. 
adding the 6GT into that mix is going to be awesome. It's going to enable us to compare different uh, six millimeter cartridges, uh, including putting them on the, the recoil rig, which will be really fun. Uh, we're going to be chambering an ultra match barrel. So the rifles that I build, everything's dialed to perfection. Every process is is monitored down to one ten thousandth of an inch, you know, really extreme precision. And I've got the, the reamer from Alpha, which will be really interesting to try uh, with, their, with their brass. Uh, also wanted to try out some new year. We've got the Baker wings. Those are for competition and are a great way to get a little bit more support on the fore end. And uh, that'll be a fun thing to try as well. There's also the opportunity here to look at load development and look at you know, what are we going to do with 6GT compared to what we did with 6Dasher? And then also comparing the short action with the, the sixes, right for right now, with the long action that I've got as well. Okay, so about the 6GT. When I started to investigate 6GT, what I was curious about was to compare it to 6Dasher. I have a lot of experience with 6Dasher. It's, it's performed really, really well. Very easy to tune, inherently very accurate lower recoil and longer barrel life compared to other cartridges like six millimeter Creedmoor. Lot to like about the Dasher. I absolutely love it. One of the downsides is there are inherently some magazine issues and feeding issues. And George Gardner, the designer of this cartridge, that was one of his main goals was to address those feeding and magazine issues. That is probably the biggest value proposition that 6GT brings to the picture. Build on the capabilities and the ballistics of 6Dasher, but to address that key consideration. Another big difference between the two. So J Precision and Hornady pushed 6GT through SAMI. So it is SAMI certified, whereas 6Dasher is not. This enables more consistency and standardization around cartridge dimensions, chamber dimensions, ammunition specifics, and so on and so forth. So that right there is a really big thing. Uh, the shoulder is a little bit larger in diameter on the 6GT compared to the uh, corresponding portion of the chamber for 6Dasher. So you can actually take a 6GT reamer and punch a 6Dasher up to the GT. It'll basically clean it up right there at the shoulder. And then the shoulder is actually about 100 thousandths further forward. And that shoulder being pushed forward and the cartridge being overall longer is what helps to prevent those nose diving issues that you can experience with 6Dasher. The GT also has a slightly higher velocity capability compared to the Dasher because of the increased case capacity. And it's interesting to compare. They're very, very similar at the end of the day, uh, but there are some key differences. So here's the cartridge dimensions you can see kind of side by side. And, and the key thing here is, yes, the shoulder is about 100 thousandths, I calculated, depending on which dasher geometry you're looking at, it's about 108 thousandths further forward on the GT compared to the dasher. And then for reference, and if you click on that first link in the video description, I'll have this in the article. Dave Manson put together a reamer for me for six dasher that's worked really well. Here's the geometry for that, and then correspondingly, Alpha has the carbide reamer optimized for the lower speed manual machine that I'm running for the 6GT with 170 thousandths free bore. I talked to Tom Danielson at Alpha Munitions and had a discussion about what bullets I was going to run and he recommended that particular geometry. Okay, so let's next talk about build components. So here's what we've got for build components. Of course, we've got the MDT ACC short action chassis. I've got an AICS MDT mag with the extension. We're gonna use a Trigger Tech Diamond Remington 700 on the BAT TR, which we're gonna steal from this six dasher barreled action. I've got a Krieger match grade, one and seven and a half twist, five groove barrel. I think I'm gonna finish this off at 26 inches. That should yield some good velocities. Also got an area 419 Hellfire muzzle brake. Next, let's talk about tools. Okay, for tools, at the heart of the whole matter is the Precision Matthews TL1660 lathe. This is an extremely beefy lathe, ultra high precision, all Taiwanese. It's got a 60 inch capacity swing and 60 inches between centers. Uh, on that lathe, I've got the 
straight shot gunsmithing, true bore alignment system, and I'm gonna be using the straight shot gunsmithing range rods as well. I've got a Greg Tannel Gratan fixed holder for the reamer. We're using an Alpha Munitions specialized carbide reamer with 170 thousandths free bore. Again, I talked to Tom Danielson over there. He said, yeah, based on the bullets that you wanna use, spanning from the Burger 105s, the Burger 109s, and the Hornady 110 grain A tips, this is gonna be a good setup. I've got a Dave Manson, uh, this is a go gauge. I can make this a go, no go gauge by putting some masking tape on the back to lengthen it by two thousandths of an inch. I used this on the 22 GT build that I just did. You're gonna to wanna to check that build out. Really, really great results on that as well. I've got Mitutoyo precision measurement. And when I bought this lathe, I splurged and bought an Aloris CXA size tool post and tool holder system. Really, really good made in USA gear. So that is the tools we're using for this build. So another thing to cover, and this is actually more of a discussion, is what to use for load components. I've got 200 pieces of the Alpha Munitions 6GT brass coming. I've already gotten 100 of the 200. That should pretty much take care of what I need to do there. This brass, again, the results I've gotten with the 22GT and with the 6 Dasher, those are the other two cartridges I have Alpha brass for totally phenomenal results. Also, a few bullets that I've had really good luck with with the 6 Dasher. The Burger 105s, the Burger 109s, and the Hornady 110 grain A tips. Here's the question for you is, if you're loading and shooting 6GT, what has worked well for you? What powder, what powder charge, what bullets? Tell me all about it. Finally, the next video in this series is going to be the barrel work. The threading of the muzzle, the cut down of the barrel, the chambering process, uh, the polishing of the barrel, the laser engraving, and the checking of the headspace. Lots to cover in that video. But what I don't want to do is tell the same super long, super in-depth story each time. I want to take these rifle builds and really change it up each time and focus on one or two things in depth and then also cover the entire process at a higher level. That should keep it interesting and make for videos that are not four or five hours in length. So this is gonna be great. I am super pumped, man. I cannot wait to shoot this rifle. I'm really looking forward to the machining work and I hope that you're subscribed so that you'll be able to follow along each part in the series. Again, if you have any feedback about the build, any ideas for me, any anecdotes, experiences that you've had with 6GT or the ACC system, please drop a comment and we'll start a discussion. That concludes this video. That means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Also, make your voice heard. If you have something to say, please drop a comment. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications because you're not gonna wanna miss the awesome content that is coming up. And finally, flex your reloading pride. You could look great in one of these t-shirts. We've got multiple designs at the Ultimate Reloader store. I'll see you later because I'm off to go shooting. Thank you.